It's a common misconception that the Germans had superior tanks throughout World War II. In fact, there's countless times where this is not the case. During the start of the war versus France, versus Britain and Africa, and the biggest one in my opinion versus Soviet Russia in Operation Barbarossa. On July 1941, Guderian states, Here for the first time the enemy deployed his T-34 tank, a tank against which our guns at the time were largely ineffective. So the tank issue was Germany didn't have any tank that could really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the T-34 and KV-1s. Because the T-34 had an effective armor, around 63 to 67 millimeters, and really the guns that they had at the time were mainly the 37 millimeter. And the 50 millimeter gun, which were rare in German cases in 1940-41, could only penetrate the lower hull of the side of the T-34 at 500 meters. And in my opinion, that's pretty much bazooka range, or we call this rifle range, and if you need a gun to do that, that's uh, quite uh, a fa failure in your anti-tank weaponry. Uh, the T-34 could engage, and pretty much their Soviets had a manual which told them to engage about 1,800 meters. So potentially it could have even been a larger distance they could have t taken the tanks out if they wanted to. Also, the T-34 was faster than the German Panzers. So one example was from a hapless German 80-gun crew that reported that their Pac-36 managed to get 23 shots off a T-34. That's almost two minutes of firing on a, on, with a superior, supremely efficient AT crew, so they would be reloading um, with maximum efficiency. So you would imagine after that the German AT tank crew would be shocked to see yeah, their guns so impotent in penetrating. And this was pretty much repeated over and over in the front with many stories of guns just totally bouncing off the T-34 but also a testament to the slow reaction time or the non-reaction to the Russian tank crews um, and a failure potentially that we can point out later of their uh, training. In the last World War II production video, we saw that the tanks available to the Germans were majority the P3, P2s, and the most powerful gun that they could have was the 50mm, which was still not powerful enough to penetrate the armor of the KV-1 and T-34s of the day at the start of Barbarossa. So looking at the statistics here, you can see how much they were outnumbered as in the previous video. Total German tax, 3,266 up against 8,590 uh, Soviet tanks. The count of the German corps, and this is their split up of their tanks. So some of them had a lot more of the better guns. You can see that the dark gray is the 50 millimeters and the light uh, aqua blue is the 37 millimeters, P3s and Panzer 38Ts, and the total German tax in red. So the majority were the 37 millimeters. And, and the Soviets, for the 8,590 tanks, you had uh, a small proportion of them were the actual T-34s and KV-1s, uh, but it's a colossal amount of tanks, and they did represent a small minority, but you can see that it uh, it's still outnumbered. Um, so in the dark gray, it's the uh, T-34 KV, KV-1s, rather split out well between the battalions, some of them having considerable amounts that if they met one of these German corps, they would have easily um, <laughs> rolled them over if they used them correctly, because uh, 452 in one. And there's even a 50 millimeter, the best of the German guns at the time, um, did not even reach up to 200 in a, in a particular corps, or oh, one, one over here. Um, but the ratio for the Soviet tank superiority was uh, 2.63. And if you're just counting the 50 millimeter, the best the Germans can feel, it's 1.39 superiority to T-34 and KV-1, which uh, is a big problem for the Germans at this time. So really, how the hell did they destroy them? So what did actually kill those T-34 KV-1 behemoths when the German tanks or guns actually faced off with them? I think most people would think that the 88s, those anti-aircraft gun convert to, to 80 guns, were the German savior in destroying the more powerful, numerous Russian tanks. I mean, why would you even question it? Because looking at the guns available to them, what could destroy them? But if you can see this pie chart, surprisingly, the odds on paper um, that look, the, the 50 millimeter actually did most of the destroying of the KV-1s and T-34s in 1941 and 42. 54% for the KDBK 39 50mm, 75 for the KW38, and the 
8.8 or 88 centimeter FLAC 8018, 3.4% only. And then you have the 7.5s, which are out uh, later on um, because it's 42 as well. Um, so this shows that it was definitely not the case. So really, how did they do it? Was it Russian Russian uh, uh, shortcomings in terms of their tactics, training, etc.? Or was it the uh, quality of the German tank forces or tank crew and, and tactics? Well, I'll go through that list right now. Um, I guess in hindsight, it's easy to find all sorts of evidence which points to the actual numbers. But this is what the theories are out there. To reinforce the German tactics and the way they killed the T-34s, we're lucky enough to have a general from 1942 in Germany with his manual on how to do that. He distributed this to the units of the Eastern Front on, and it's titled How to Combat the Russian T-34 with Our Panzers. His name is Der Schnelltruppen von Oberkommando des Haares. Sorry about that. So, uh, first one is basically in a hull down position, take up the T-34 in a firefight, then or drive in a zigzag course to make it difficult for the opponent to hit the target. Then, at the same time, utilizing all available cover, two or more P3s attempt to circumvent the T-34 to the right or left in order to gain a position or flank to knock him out with short range. In, uh, if we have the P P4s available among our own panzers, it's to be employed in the front of the opponent, then used the smoke shells that can blind the T-34 or aid other panzers in closing in. It is possible that the opponent will think the smoke is poison gas and break off the action. Um, so basically, when numerically, when finding numerical superiority enemy T-34s and KVs, success has always resulted when our panzer unit builds a fire front and overwhelms the enemy with fire. Even when no penetration can be achieved, the enemy, impressed with the action and rate of fire of the German tanks, almost always breaks off the action. Wow, that is a very roundabout way to fight the T-34s, where so many things can go wrong, pretty much dodging things, trying to get so close so they can penetrate and being in risk of being destroyed, but they still were successful in that, which, um, yeah, so this shows uh, how they did it and why they were successful in doing it, um, also because of the teamwork uh, with Germans and their radios in all the tanks and um, superior optics and being able to uh, target and have good accuracy, as he states. So what about on the Russian side? There's plenty of theories out there of why the T-T-4s and 76 and KV-1s didn't live up to their on-paper superiority of armor and gun. Um, the, the main reasons I'll, I'll list below, there's a lot of theories, and in hindsight I think it's very easy to put a hundred different uh, reasons why this is the case. Well, I'll choose some which I think are the most important, such as the fire control efficiency. Um, this is a design flaw in the TT-476, which does not show up on the paper, where it needed two people to control the turret, taking away the commander's ability to command, which led to poor teamwork, and also having no radios in the tanks made it even worse for teamwork. Um, that also stopped the ability of the commander to spot the enemy, and also with its poor gun optics, uh, it made it hard to spot and fire back accurately whereas the Panzer III's and all the other tanks were able to fire more accurately and a lot more faster. You have many um, accounts of uh, of the Panzer III's shooting the T-34's multiple times, even six or more, more times, where the T-34 uh, would respond very slowly, and if they did, <laughs> were very inaccurate. Um, so that comes down also to the training. I uh, don't have any statistics on the actual training, but um, apparently that they were uh, less less lesser trained and less experienced than the German tank crew had the Battle of France to to um, add to their veterancy. Uh, also, the other one I think was important was the uh, support vehicles that each of the armies contain. So the Red Army, uh, a tank division uh, combining around 400 tanks, would be supported by 1,500 trucks, so fuel, I'm guessing, ammunition, etc. Whereas the German tank division, um, with, with, uh, which only had around 200 tanks, uh, was supported by 2,000 trucks, so more than the Russian tanks and uh, half the amount of tanks in the division. So that uh, would prove the Germans did get it right in terms of the ratio of supply and tank. Um, but re in reality, when it comes down to what killed the majority of T-34s and KV-1s, it probably wasn't German tanks. 
Uh, but if it was, it was probably the, the 50 millimeter. It was the 50 millimeter Panzer threes, but most uh, of the tanks, I think simply broke down. didn't have the fuel and were abandoned. Uh, lots of missing parts. I believe <laughs> lots of uh, Russian tanks were missing parts at the start of the war and did not get the right supply. Uh, but when the Germans did face it head to head, it probably was a horrible experience for the Germans. Imagine shooting six or seven shots and, or even 23 shots like that pack 36 crew and nothing happening to it. So, um, the, it would be probably be a nightmare, but in the end, uh, the Germans were able to deal with it by superior tactics. And that shows in how well they did in Barbarossa, even, even though that they were outnumbered with tanks and also outnumbered even with superior tanks with titular cavy ones to their lowly 50 millimeter.